This is some of the greatest fertilizer on the planet. Right here. Cow manure. If you're an organic gardener, this is garden gold. Except this cow manure isn't. This cow manure would kill my entire garden. Three days ago, we got a pair of Dexter cows. Both of them are pregnant. They should be delivered of their babies in a month and a half or so. But I asked the farmer where I bought the, the cows from, I said, what do you feed these guys? Well, they have some pasture and they have some hay. Where do you get the hay? Oh, we make a lot of our own hay. Do you spray the hay with anything? In particular, do you spray the hay with Grazon? The answer was yes. Grazon is a persistent herbicide, which goes through, it goes into the manure, it stays on the grass, it goes through into the manure, it can be composted in the manure, you put it in your garden, it will destroy your entire garden. All that to say, we have to throw out the first three days worth of manure from these cows. If I put this stuff in my garden, it could very well kill all the hard work I did for this year. The cow's digestive tract, I had to go look it up. How long does it take for something to pass through a cow? And then my personal fed is like this guy. Why do I have to read this stuff? Anyhow, turns out it's one to three days. One to three days. So we had one to three days I said, okay, we're gonna go a full three days from the time we got the cow, and then all the manure pats are getting thrown away. So we picked up nine five-gallon buckets total so far, and that's, that's pretty much it. I just had a couple left here for the video. And nine buckets of cow manure are getting dumped in the hole where there was an old stump because we can't trust that. If, and I thought, you know, what if I just put it on my corn? I've got a corn patch. If I put it on the corn, what happens? Well, the corn can pick up the grazon that's inside of this. Then when I go and I compost the corn stalks later or throw them in the chicken run, etc., that stuff could still be there and could still kill plants. I had two to three years worth of weird growth in the garden beds that were contaminated before, even though I did my best to get all of the manure out. And I'll tell you that story in a moment. A cow is an amazing composting machine takes in carbon and nitrogen and minerals and breaks it down inside of her incredible digestive tract to make possibly the world's most perfect fertilizer. And that is an awesome invention, the cow. But as usual, we kind of screwed it up. Certain weeds become pests in cow pastures and in hay. And so this herbicide, Grazon, among others, was developed to knock out those weeds while not hurting the grass. And I did not know anything about this problem until 2012 when I got a double load of manure from a local dairy that would sell their manure. I got this big truckload of composted manure and I spread it all over my gardens. Spread it all in my garden beds. I spread it along a hundred foot row of blackberries that I had bought. That was painful. Nine dollars a blackberry, a hundred foot. Mulberry tree, a few pecan trees. It was an absolute wreck, right? I didn't know I had wrecked it until about a week or two later when I saw the growth start to twist. And at first I thought, well, maybe it was too hot. Maybe there's too much nitrogen in it. Maybe it's a virus. But then I'm like, why would the mulberry be twisting and the blackberries and my eggplants and my tomatoes and the pecans? That's not a virus. That's everything. Oh, well, it's not the nitrogen. It can't be the nitrogen. This stuff is compost. It's crumbly. It's old. It does not, it's not hot anymore. What could it be? So I started looking up manure killed garden because I'm thinking the only thing that's common with all this is that I put this manure on it and so I find oh there was this there was this uh, set of allotments in England and they all got hit with this stuff and then there was a 
community garden out west somewhere that got hit with it and I was like, it's something they spray. So I called the farmer up and I said, hey, did you spray anything over there? Well, I can't think, well actually we tried this new stuff and we sprayed out the field this last, uh, this last year in the summer to get rid of uh, pigweed. I said, would you, would you mind um, sending me a picture of the label? I said, I've got a lot of plants that are really sick and I think that stuff might have gone through. So he sends me the label and it's got aminopyrrolid in it. Aminopyrrolid lasts for a very, very long time. It goes through the cow, it goes through the grass, the grass picks it up. If you get hay from a field that has aminopyrrolid in it and then you spread the hay around your garden, put it in your compost, it will twist all of your plants the next year. It'll kill stuff for a couple of years. If the cows eat it, it goes through in the manure. You put the manure in the compost and it kills it, which means if you get potting soil that has it in there or municipal compost that has cow manure in it, or if you get rotten hay, or if you get goat manure, or if you get horse manure, if they were eating hay that had been sprayed in a field that had been sprayed, even if it had been sprayed months before, the plants can pick up this persistent molecule that goes through into the manure and it will wreck everything. So at this point, you think, wow, what's the hope in all this? This is absolutely terrible. What are you gonna do? I realized I could not trust big ag. I could not trust other people to compost or to provide manure or hay or anything else that was safe. And that is so frustrating. I read Sir Albert Howard's An Agricultural Testament. And he's talking about all these waste products of agriculture and how they can be reused. And some of them it's like cotton gin trash. So I look up cotton gin trash. That's the leftover after they do the, the, the cotton harvest. I look it up and I find out they can use this huge list of toxins on it. Back when Sir Albert Howard wrote about that, they weren't spraying a ton of pesticides on the cotton fields like they are now. I don't want any of that stuff in my food. He talks about all of the cow manure from cattle operations. Well, the cow manure, since 2007, they've been spraying this persistent herbicide on the hay fields and recommending it everywhere. Well, now the cow manure is corrupt. You can't take that stuff and put it on your garden. You can't go and get hay. You can't do the nice Ruth Stout garden without trusting. You can't necessarily even do straw bale gardening without potentially getting hit with a long-term persistent herbicide. It's totally frustrating. So what do you do? You gotta compost everything. You gotta figure out how to make as much compost and to save as many materials as possible to grow the plants that you grow. I got so paranoid about outside inputs that I did a bunch of different experiments. Now, I got kicked. It was a sickening feeling to see all of my gardens and everything twisted up. You know how much I love gardening. And I was so irritated. I was so absolutely completely disgusted and I felt like I poisoned all of my beautiful organic beds. And so I wrote about it. I wrote an article and Natural Awakenings Magazine published my article on this. And it was the first big article I'd written on gardening. I did my little gardening blog, but I wrote this for an actual magazine. And then Mother Earth News asked if I would write about it. So I wrote for Mother Earth News. And the next thing I knew, I was writing for gardening publications and I finally, it, this culminated in me writing the book Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting. After four years of experimenting, and I had been doing composting before then with all kinds of different methods, but four years of saying, okay, how can I feed my gardens without having to rely on industrial inputs? Can we compost meat? <laughs> can we compost fish? Can we compost stuff that might make people nervous that we won't talk about on YouTube? You know, it was a big, big hit for me, but I realized that God had a plan in it and he pretty much gave me a kick and got me on my garden writing career because this had happened. And then other people I've seen since then and I've reached out to, like Scott Head, his gardens got really messed up by Grazon. And uh, Charles Dowding's gardens got messed up by Grazon. Multiple people have been hit by this stuff since then and bit by bit the word uh, is getting out there that you can't trust products of industrial agriculture and particularly manure. If your neighbor has a load of rotten manure and says, hey, why don't you take my manure, your, this manure here and put it in your melon patch, don't do it. You gotta buy the cow yourself 
or figure out how to compost everything on your property and figure out which items are safe and which items aren't. And so a lot of my videos you'll see dealing with that and of course my book, Compost Everything, which I will put a link below. I'm super excited about getting cows because now I have amazing compost generating machines. And if they are making nine buckets of manure in three days, nine five gallon buckets, that's between the two cows, I will get three five gallon buckets full of manure every day that I know is not contaminated. Now that I threw out the first three days, we are on good unsprayed pasture. And I can rest easy that this manure is going to be the way God designed it and not the way man perverted it. So watch out with putting manure in your garden. This is a warning. I'm gonna keep giving this warning. Don't let it happen to you. It happened to me. It happened to a lot of other people. And some years you may have had a garden where things just didn't grow right. It might not have been your fault. So think back and think, what did I put on? What could have done that? And just keep that in mind. Check out Compost Everything, the good guide to extreme composting if you're interested. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. Try.